I think it's time to start to think about how to paint, how to mix these colors properly to get um, the colors that we want to achieve these muted, grayed out, lower intensity colors that David Milne achieves within his paintings. So to do that, what I have here are some basic paint colors. And these are the paint colors that I would give my students. We've got bright red, cobalt blue, bright yellow, white, and black. So your typical colors, easy peasy, easy to find. Also, you're gonna notice that my palette is white and that makes my mixing really easy so that I can see the colors that I'm trying to mix. I can see the under, um, the underbelly, the under color of whatever it is that I'm trying to mix. Uh, now, you can do whatever you want and use whatever you want. Um, white works well. Also, sometimes people like to use, oh, and mine is just, um, it's like an old corrugated sign. Um, sometimes people like to use a piece of glass. Um, so if you're using just a, a simple piece of glass, like out of a, an old frame or something like that, you might tape the edges just so that they're not sharp. Um, sometimes people will use um, palettes that you can buy that are uh, disposable and they come in a little um, pack of several, I don't know, 10, 10 to 20. Um, there's a lot of different options. So my recommendation, if you're just starting out, to try to use something that is fairly white so you can see what you're doing. You don't want to start with black or you don't want to start with something clear um, where your colors are getting kind of mixed and mingled in with the other colors that are below it or whatever. You can't see what you're doing. So start simple. All right, let's get to it, shall we? So um, I've got my uh, palette knives here. And these palette knives are going to be useful for me in my blending. So always mix your colors on your palette. Don't mix them on your canvas unless that's a particular look that you're going for. But if you want to make sure that your colors are um, full and uh, flat, then you would want to mix them on your palette. Otherwise, you might end up with uh, variations in your colors. Um, like a string of red that you didn't mean to have if you tried to mix it directly on your canvas. So David Milton uses a lot of um, grays and browns and creams within his work. Um, and a lot of his colors that he uses, like blues and greens and things like that, are muted down a little bit. So it's important if you're going to be uh, using him as inspiration, you should know how to make brown because brown is gonna take you far in this world. So let's do that. I'm gonna probably have a tricky time trying to do this um, with the palette up, but we're gonna try our best. So focus on the palette for a moment. Here's what we're gonna do. When you make brown, you're always going to start, whenever you mix colors, you're always going to start with the lightest color first. So between these three colors, it's gonna take all of them to make our brown, all three primaries, but this is the lightest of the three. So we're gonna start with this. We're gonna pull it, I guess, right there. Okay, and then we take a little less red. And brown is always a gamble. You're always going back and forth to, fit, to find the perfect brown that you want. So don't be scared. If you don't get it the first time, that's fine. And a little bit less blue. So lots of yellow, decent amount of red, less blue. And we're just gonna mix that and see what we get. Now you may find that mixing colors is kind of like mesmerizing. Some people love mixing colors, just trying to achieve that perfect color that they've got in their head. Some people hate mixing colors because it can be frustrating. All right, so what we have here is a very solid forest green. 
Now, if you're not sure what the color is, like on my palette, it's pretty difficult to tell. So if you're having trouble telling on your palette, you can just simply drag it and you can kind of see the under color that shows up there. So if this is green, like a forest green, and I am going for brown, and I know that it requires all three primary colors to make brown, I've got green, I know that yellow and blue make green, which means that I need more of the red because the red's not really showing up if this is green. So I'm gonna dump some red in there and see what happens. Now there is always a chance that you might put too much red in or not enough. And it's just a game of going back and forth to figure out what you're going for and achieving that perfect color. So there we have some brown and again, it might be kind of hard to see it. So I'm gonna do a drag. And that might help, but we've got some brown. So with that, that handy, handy brown, that's going to help us. Uh, now we can get creams from that um, and we can add that into other colors to mute them as well. But let's take a quick look now at how to get some creams if we've got this brown. We can separate it take some of it, throw it down here, add some white, and see where we go with that. The best thing that you can do when you're working with color is just play with color. So now we've got kind of a, a taupey color and I could add more white to that if I wanted. Mix that in. Now if I was going for more of a cream color, I would probably add a little bit more white in. If I was going for um, like your Caucasian skin color and even that could be a whole range of colors I would probably add a little bit more red in make it a little bit more rosy something else to think about too is if you plan on blending any colors together on your palette or sorry on your canvas then you will want to have several values so you want to have your darks you would want to have your lights and then you would want to have middle values so that you can work it and blend them all together instead of trying to um, just kind of blend everything on the canvas some other things to think about i'm just going to set them aside if you are trying to, um, let's make a, for example, let's make a, a muted green color. So if you're trying to make a muted green, like a grayed out green, this is what you would do. Again, you're gonna start with your light colors first. So that's your yellow is much lighter than your blue. Because your blue is such a strong color, you don't need very much of it to really alter your yellow. So it really picks up that blue and you've got yourself a crazy strong green here. All right, so if we wanted to make this into like a forest green with um, a little bit grayed out, what you're going to do, again, you just add 
Now you could do this in two ways. You could add your white into this and then your black into this, or you could make it gray and add that into it. I'm gonna go with just white to start with, get it as light as I want it. I sort of feel like I have more control over it this way. Doing it in separate steps. So I've got this really nice green here. And if I just add a little bit of black, not very much because again, similar to blue, black's a really overwhelming color. Don't need much because it will really change whatever color you're working with. It is strong. So adding a little bit of white and black into that green, mutes it down. creates like a muddier version of green. Again, I'm not sure how well you can see it on the palette. Let's play with even more. So if we wanted to make it even darker because we've added that white in, it's always just going to gray out a little bit. Like it will, it will keep the green background color, but it's just going to gray it out a bit. So David Milne used a lot of colors like these within his work. And I think that you could probably have just a ton of fun mixing colors, trying to gather all of the different values and intensities in all of the colors, um, plan it out first. Uh, before you really start. I always tell my students to plan out a rough copy uh, color version so that they know what colors work well together and what colors don't or if they need to make some small changes. Um, so get a good vision of what you want to do. Mix all your colors, practice them, have some fun with it. Remember, art isn't meant to be perfect. Um, art is meant to be freeing. Art is meant to be an outlet. And I, I would love to see what you guys come up with. Um, have a great day. Good luck with everything that you create. Bye-bye.